Hello, welcome, I'm Commissar Marek and today we are going to take a look at military tips and tricks for C3 Augustus. The first thing we need to touch upon is what is military as a concept in this game, which is CC3, which is a city building game. The military is there to spur your city on economically or hinder you in terms of how much you can invest into your economy and how quickly. Uh, this means that uh, it's never supposed to be a thing that uh, is there to crush you. It's there to make you invest into other things and so you don't at all times spend all your money developing your economy and getting ahead of the game. So you can think of the military as an additional thing that's in the game to make you have variety of things to do as well as a tool for map makers to make you slow down your economic progress. At least that's the idea about it. Uh, it also has a, a f um, it has a use in terms of gaining favor with saving distant Roman cities from invasion, which we'll cover later on in this video. So the first thing we'll look upon is what are military unit stats in the game and enemy unit stats, as well as how does damage work. So I'm gonna show you on the screen right now. Uh, what are the stats for military units, uh, for all your allied military units, that is, for... Mm, there are three types of units. Javelineers, which are auxiliaries, horse units, cavalry, which are also auxiliaries, and then legionaries. Legionaries are much slower moving melee infantry units, while the javelineers are skirmishers who throw missiles, uh, who throw javelins at range, and horse units are very fast melee cavalry, but they are much weaker. You can see the stats, I'm gonna put them right here. So you can see their differences between their morale as well as defense stat, as well as health stat and attack stat. The Mataka stat is melee attack stat. If the attack stat is there, it means just ranged attack. So the other thing I wanted to touch upon is that damage on enemy units, on your units as well, persists through the fights, which means that if there is a situation in which an enemy army upon entering the map will take some fire from either your javelin units or sentries from towers or any other source, or even melee damage from any walkers like prefects which will engage the enemy, at a distance. Uh, what's gonna happen is the damage on that particular enemy, that one guy who took the hits, is actually gonna persist. If he's not outright killed, he will actually have lower health stat while he continues onto the map and keeps fighting. And so this can add up, therefore it might be a good idea to pepper the enemy with some arrows from watchtowers or even ballista bolts from towers or other um, sources of damage to weaken the enemy army before it engages your army. There is a morale break or a route uh, mechanic in the game and how that works is if the enemy army suffers a percentage casualty of its total number of units uh, it, it is dependent on what the enemy is, because some enemies have very high morale, while some of them have very low morale, so some armies might break very quickly, while some of them will stay on the field basically almost to the last man. And how that works is, if the percentage is achieved for that particular enemy type, uh, then the army will disintegrate and head towards the exit point. Sometimes they will still keep heading forward if the command is still active, well, they were trying to move somewhere, but uh, when they reach that position, they will just turn around and run. It can also happen to your own units, and it's known as a chain route. So if you have several units on the field, and some of them get absolutely evaporated, and none of the men remain, or they route and break, the, it, will go, it, it will affect the rest of your army in negative fashion with morale, and it could cause a chain route with to happen, which means that your entire army will just head back to their forts without fighting. It is a severe case though, because with the current balance, you would need to lose like three or four, uh, three or four entire forts uh, in quick succession for that to mount up to that 
difference and if you have academy training it should be of setting it we will touch upon academy and all that in this video just for now be mindful of that there is a concept of chain route and morale in the game and that's how it works next thing we'll touch upon is a supply post in season 3 augustus the new feature has been added into the game where you will need to feed your soldiers or they will not recruit and they will not listen to orders because they will not have morale if they don't get fed supply post is a 3x3 building as large as a barracks for example and it needs to be placed somewhere in the city where it will have access to a road connection to a granary because it will send out a soldier, a walker, which will walk into a granary and then bring back food like a market lady or a caravan survivor walker. So they will fetch food from a granary and each one cartload of food is split into hundredfold like it is with markets and caravan sarai. Uh, now, for each active soldier that's in your city, it will consume food per month and the food consumption is that each soldier eats five food per month on very hard difficulty. It is staggered, so if you play on hard, normal or very easy, I'm gonna put the chart here so you can see what the consumption rates for those difficulties are, but since everyone is playing on very hard, just five food per soldier, which means that if you split it, like one card load is hundredfold food, that means that you can feed 20 soldiers per month with one card load of food delivered to a granary from a farm, for example. And so that can mount up if you imagine over the course of a year, which because most things are measured in a year, so a farm produces 9.6 card loads of food per year and one card load feeds, uh, one card load would feed 20 soldiers per month. You can imagine how much that would amount to per year on very hard difficulty. So the maximum amount of forts you can have is 6 and each fort has 16 units or 16 men maximum size. So in total you can see how that quickly can become a big drain on your supply of food on any given map, especially on maps that have not been designed for C3 Augustus where the food is measured and limited to uh, vanilla or Ju uh, Julius settings. Uh, another thing to touch upon is that um, if you give your man uh, more food types, not just one, but you give them more, it will impact their morale in positive fashion. So if they receive one food type, it's just baseline morale, as you've seen on the chart with the military unit stats. If they receive a second food type, it will give them plus five morale. And if they receive a third food type, it will give them plus 10 morale overall. And you can think of that as percentage. So plus 5% or 10% morale, which can amount to a lot if you need your soldiers to stand and fight their last man, which sometimes can happen in very hard military maps where people just go overboard from the numbers and you have maximum size military, but it's still not enough, then mm, you will need to mm, use every faucet you, you have at your disposal to make your soldiers fight for as long as possible. Okay, so next up we'll take a look at placement of barracks and military academy. So these two things are necessary for your military to function. Barracks is 3x3 structure that can be placed anywhere. It needs access to warehouse with weapons if you want to train legionaries. If you don't want to train legionaries, you want to um, have the barracks anywhere. You don't need weapons for auxilia. And uh, barracks will train units, but only if there's a supply post that's active in the city and supplying the forts actively. Military Academy is a structure that costs a thousand denarii, which is usually um, quite an investment for a city, but it's well worth it in terms of what it does, because it provides you with 10% morale boost to all your units, as well as making your soldiers much stronger for distant battle events where you save distant Roman cities from invasion which we will touch upon later. For now, just keep that in mind. If you build Military Academy, the main, most crucial benefit is sending them to the Empire. Otherwise, it's gonna only affect their morale. 
and it will also allow legionaries to use the studio formation to have missile projectile block chains. It's just their square formation basically when you click on them. Okay, next up we'll touch upon uh, the multi barracks thing. Uh, you can have multi barracks in Augustus if you tweak the option on, but it's generally regarded as a thing you should not do, and the only viable way to get a second barracks to, because the, the units will produce at concentrate from the barracks, and uh, you can only have so many trained in short time period, so if you take big losses you need to quickly make a lot of units, to replace casualties or just place new forms and you need to fill them quickly. Second barracks would be great, but as I said, it's considered not an exploit but a unsavory thing to do. So the only real, like, legit way to do it would be to build a Grand Temple to Mars, which will act as a second barracks. If you use a multi barracks exploit or you place multi barracks with the settings on, it will only one of the barracks will fetch weapons and train legionaries too, so keep that in mind. Uh, Grand Temple to Mars also allows you to go from maximum of 6 forts up to 10 forts, and that's not affected by an epithet, it's just when you build a temple you, you immediately get access to those 4 extra forts, which can be super useful in heavy military maps. Regarding the Mars epithets, I'm gonna take a look at that. Uh, in a separate video with Grand Temples, but just one of them I'm gonna mention is you can pick an epithet that's gonna alleviate your supply post consumption rate by priests from Marta Mars Temples collecting food from housing and depositing it in the supply post. Another thing we need to uh, mention is how the soldiers path around the city. So, if there is a distinct way you want to place your forts as well as your barracks and military academy. Usually, on maps, you should look for inaccessible areas of like where you cannot place housing, but it's a central location or nearby invasion point where you know that invasions are gonna come from there and usually it's a good idea to put forts on a high ground because the forts are quite large in footprint you want to preserve your good space for building housing and other things like industry and farming so building forts in inaccessible places where uh, you have staircases like physical access but you couldn't get water up these cliffs for example and it is in a good central position might mean that your soldiers will be able to reach all the sides of the map quite handily uh, while if it is a one-dimensional map, which means that you know the attacks are only gonna come from certain direction, like for example Mediolanum from the campaign, you can actually place the forts mm, right up against the edges or mm, in that direction so that you know where the attacks are gonna come from and there is no worry to get attacked from the very opposite side where you place them. That would be a concern if the attacks if it's a map where uh, there are multiple invasion points on separate edges, if you put up your forts against those edges, if the attack happens from the other side, you will have your army split up because it's gonna take them a long time to reach it, unless uh, like you have highways or the map is not large, which usually map custom maps are quite large. The other thing to mention with legionaries is it can be quite a pain for them to reach battlefield because they are very slow and the only way to boost their speed is highways and highways are expensive so it's not always practical to have them and legionaries are very good melee combatants however they just don't have capability to deal damage at range and they will get overwhelmed if there are enough enemies they just will also die. Mm, so they can be good but in very specific circumstances, the nature of their slow movement means that unless you place their forts very carefully and very well, you, they will usually not be able to reach the combat zone. That goes especially for custom maps where there are multiple invasion points in different edges and you just don't know where to put them because otherwise they wouldn't be able to reach the other side if you select one and put them there. So, legionaries usually overrated unit, not too good. For distant battles, saving distant cities, they are very good, we'll touch upon the stats, but for like regular combat against enemy armies, they are just overrated and actively bad for their army. Usually they just don't reach the battlefield in time at all before the enemy is ravaging your city already, so that's not good. 
uh, while the best way to handle army is just go ahead and spam javelineers and that's because they don't require weapons which legionaries require one piece of weapon per each legionary and they can be quite expensive weapons on some custom maps can be very very expensive to get not to mention that they are just bad at fighting uh, because they just cannot reach the places where they need to be at, in time while javelineers are all the same speed they will stack up on a single tile so the tactic is just to put all your forts into one spot rotate them carefully so that they face the enemy and then what happens is they will just all be able to fire unless there is an obstruction uh, in the way which obstructions for firing arcs of towers watchtowers or javelineers are um, three tiles wide swaths of terrain which means forests mountains or uh, structures like stuff you build like amphitheater or barracks which are three tiles wide will block off any firing possible angle and so you want to keep terrain with this in mind so you can for example cut forests in and leave two tiles of forest to block off pathing but still retain possibility to fire at the enemies through the forest. Sometimes on custom maps what will happen is people will add invasion points to different places where they are inaccessible and locked off, so it's not always a good idea to expand everywhere or even like you can delete bridges and leave the enemy stuck on the other side, but what's gonna happen, the enemy army will just stand there and what's gonna be happening is whenever there is an invasion happening, then no immigration can happen into your city and that's gonna severely limit your possibilities of what you can do but you can for example just make a tower close by and shoot them if there is such a possible way to do it so that you don't, oh, don't let them into your city but shoot them with tar that could work and uh, this uh, will happen like when, when the enemy army invades and cannot reach your city they will just stand there but they will continuously deplete morale at very slow rate so eventually they will run and break and then they will leave the map and that's gonna be end of the invasion but it can take a long time to happen and so you cannot just reliably rely on that so instead shoot them with a the tower or prepare in advance set up your uh, soldiers in position and then let them through and kill them at the possibility of your choosing. There's also something to note about Mars blessing. If Mars is worshipped a lot in your city, he will bless your city and that means that first enemy squad that enters or is present on the battlefield will get struck by Mars's uh, wrath, which means that they will just instantly die. It's gonna kill um, a couple of soldiers, usually it's like 10 men or something like that maybe slightly more but it's nothing uh, too great it can help out but it's never like a deciding factor usually in fights okay next up we need to touch upon uh, army sizes for enemy invasions the map maker can add an invasion that's gonna happen from uh, there are several possibilities what he can do Fi uh, the first thing we need to mention is the strength of it so in Augustus it can be from 0 up to 200 men strength which means every strength is one man that's one man that's gonna come with the attack and he can set a date he cannot set a month though so it's just a year and then it then the, in that year it's gonna happen randomly in a month if it is a reg a regular attack you will get notified by events like distant battle which is the first one and that means that enemy is a couple of years away if it is enemy is closing it means that the enemy is getting closer to the city and you have just about like two years to handle it and enemy is at the door which means that the enemy army will attack within a year and that's the first event that's an enemy invasion and then you have the second uh, type of attack and that is a native uprising which can happen without any foreknowledge so no distant battle events that are gonna lead you uh, clue you in that I should be building military no it is just a sudden attack by natives which natives are weak but they are very quick 
and as I mentioned it happens without the warning so it might very well kill your city off if the event is there. That's why it's not advised to make native uprising a very first attack on a map because people will have no clue that they should be building military already and so you want to make your first attack a regular invasion unless there is a very specific circumstance to make, uh, make that justified. Uh, what can a player do with the invasions, uh, with the natives or the invasions, is he can also set an attack um, target for them. And so it can be either your best building, so that usually goes for your highest evolved housing, or food stores, which means granaries and warehouses and markets, or he can set it to uh, gold stores, which means forums, senate, stuff like that or food production chain and what's gonna happen if this target objective is achieved sometimes the enemy will leave and leave your city be and so you can suffer damage if you lose your army and they will leave and leave your city alive so it's usually worth it to let the fight play out even if you lose and see if you survive it sometimes it can happen even though it's rare and what happens usually with this is the ruins rebuilding is just very tedious task to do but it can be very well worth it if you can survive and push through because restarting is always bad and um, I and many other people don't use saves because it's basically realizing the game. You can data mine the maps and know exactly where attacks come from but there is no fun in that. It just takes away anything that's remotely fun from the military aspect of the game. And so you shouldn't, uh, if you play yourself, you can of course save if you don't want to lose all your progress, but I'd advise against it, personally. So the thing we need to mention is how difficult it affects army, um, enemy army sizes. And so I'm gonna show you the chart right here, which means that um, it goes all the way up to 100% of very hard, but it can be as low as 40% of that enemy army size on very easy. And that is interpreted from the man we mentioned. So when the map maker adds an invasion of a hundred man strength, it would only amount to 40 actual people coming onto the map as an invasion if it is on very easy. Or it could be a hundred on very hard. So yeah, there is that difference. Then we need to talk about um, distant battles, aka saving distant Roman cities from an invasion. And this event will be when Caesar asks you to send an army to uh, save a distant Roman city that's currently being invaded or will be invaded soon by barbarians. And so how this works is you need to go to your advisors and click your legions to be in empire service to be able to leave the map. They will head off to the flag of the empire, which means the blue flag where everyone leaves the uh, city from and they will head off onto the Empire map and you can actually see their progress as a legionary that's gonna walk and he's gonna reach the city in question and save it before it needs to do it before the enemy army arrives and uh, it's an actual fight the map maker sets uh, the amount of enemies or enemy strength of that distant battle and it can be anywhere from a zero up to 200 strength and how that works is uh, each of your soldiers sent will be interpreted as a strength rating and I'm gonna show you or tell you how these strength ratings are so with auxiliaries which means chevaliers and horse uh, auxilia each one soldier is measured as one strength unless they have academy training in which case it's two strength so they will be able to beat two barbarians in that attack and if it is a legionary, he has two strength for saving distant Roman cities. And it is three if he is academy trained. And how you can interpret these numbers is the actual request for saving the distant Roman city will tell you if the enemy force is small, medium or large. And this means that if it is a small enemy force, it is of strength that is 46 or below. If it is a medium enemy attack, it is of strength 89 or below. And if it is large, it can be anywhere from 89 up to 200. Hero strength uh, with your uh, units that are assisting uh, is capped at 255, which is not really necessary because the enemy can attack and only go up to 200. 
but keep that in mind it's 255 cat so if you make Grand Temple to Mars and all legionary forts and you send everyone it's not gonna give it that much more um, so yeah you can use these numbers to make sure that you beat those uh, beat those attacks the large ones are the only big question mark because it can go all the way up to 200 but that's sort of uncommon because it's just very difficult to master such an army to beat it and also players will be reluctant to send off their army because on some maps what will happen you will send your army off it will take them uh, like two years time before they return and you will get attacked in the meantime so uh, just don't send absolutely everything or you might uh, you might get destroyed the other thing uh, to mention, the last thing uh, that's on the menu today is going to be towers and how do towers work. So uh, there are defenses in the game, not only you can build forts, but you can also build walls and towers and watchtowers in Augustus and palisade walls. So how that works is a tower will need an access to a road connection and you can just pull down a single piece of road nearby a tower to make it operational. If you flick on the option in the options where uh, the towers will not need direct access from a road to a barracks, which is good because otherwise your city will look like spaghetti because you will have roads absolutely everywhere. And what will happen is a barracks will send a guard that's gonna be trained towards the tower. And barracks can only be training either soldiers or guards, so it will add to the amount of men that need to be trained if you have a bunch of towers. Having a Grand Temple to Mars might be good, you can also in Augustus set a priority if you right click on barracks to have it train, uh, have it train uh, soldiers or guards. And that's gonna be a priority for that barracks. Uh, then after a guard reaches the tower, what happens is he will actually activate the ballista that's on top of it and it's going to continuously fire on enemies, which the ballista bolts are actually very powerful. They can almost take out even an elephant in a single hit, but mm, it kills most enemy units in one shot. The only downside is low fire rate and levy that you pay for each tower in Augustus. The other thing is a watchtower, which doesn't cost any levy. It has a upfront cost that's fairly high. It also needs a guard, but what it does, it, it shoots arrows at enemies that are approaching. And it's not ne nowhere near as powerful as a, as a tower proper with a ballista, but it will still do damage because damage on enemy units persists, as I mentioned. And so if someone takes hits from those arrows, he's gonna come into a fight already weakened. So it might be worth it to sprinkle them somewhere. They also do send out a guard on a patrol duty. If he has a road, he's gonna patrol that road and uh, they can stack together. So if you make a bunch of watchtowers on flanks of an invasion point and then funnel your guards with a road, they can stack together and basically form another free javelin unit. It's gonna continuously pummel the enemy. The fact that the watchtowers don't cost any love can be very useful in cities where you are very starved for upkeep already, but you have some gold stocks to build up things but you don't want to pay that crushing upkeep or levy constantly so that might be useful we mentioned obstruction ranges the other thing i need to mention is if you are playing vanilla or julius the overflow uh, with numbers can happen with distant battles if you send your army to save a distant roman city and you send anything that's above 255 strength what's gonna happen is it's gonna overflow and bug out into just two strength and you're gonna lose it so just don't send anything more than 255 or you're gonna be in for a bad time that doesn't go for Augustus players though because Augustus fixed that and currently it's capped at 255 but it's not gonna overflow into the two so this is gonna be everything for the military tutorial or the tips and tricks the there can be a mention about civilian units that can fight, which is gladiators, lion tamers and prefects and these guys are going to go and if the prefects find an enemy in the vicinity they will even leave their roads that they are walking on and they will go and fight the enemy. They are not very good fighters but if you can have a bunch of prefectures nearby a invasion point they can actually delay the enemy or help out with numbers to slow some of them down. And the other thing is, Lion Tamers and Gladiators still will follow their path, 
but what you can do is set their path to be very long from a lion, lion house and a bunch of gladiator schools and set an arena on the other end of the lion road and then they will patrol that road basically continuously because it's gonna spawn multiple walkers per single building and so uh, if that road happens to be covering an invasion point area where the enemies are coming from or even Caesar is invading you from uh, it can actually mean that you will be able to just demolish their enemy armies or even just weaken them with a couple of the lion houses and very other schools to a point where your army can handle them if the attacks are very tough. It requires quite a bit of upkeep though to set up, so that's um, that is that. Also, you, if you go into that and you are favored drops to 10, uh, Caesar will send, an, uh, uh, send a force to arrest you and the forces will scale. The smallest one is just three enemy, three enemy legion legions with legionaries and then it's gonna rise and Caesar troops are always better these are the Caesar troops uh, stats and he's gonna send insanely sized attacks later if you defy him long enough uh, they, they can be beaten uh, but it's no mm, it's never good to fight Caesar if you can avoid it uh, I wanted to mention something else no, I think, I think we covered basically everything. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And so I thank you for watching and see you around. Bye.